so what we're going to do next, we know what the graph of one period of cosine looks like. What we're going to do next is apply transformations to it. So there's two types of transformations, horizontal and vertical. And then of those types, there's uh, shifts, which is where you uh, basically slide the graph left or right, up or down. Those are shifts. And then stretches is where you either pull it away from the x-axis, push it towards the x-axis, called a compression, or you uh, pull it along the y-axis, away from the x-axis, or compress it um, towards the x-axis. So those are the uh, four types of transformations. Instead of going through all the transformations again from pre-calculus class, what we're going to do is graph uh, in a way so that we don't have to worry about all the details of transformations. So we're going to look at the period and then uh, the horizontal shift, graph those, uh, those out, and then we'll worry about the vertical at the end. So the more difficult ones are all the horizontal transformations. So I'll write down the general form for graphing transformations. So this is the general form for graphing transformations. And we're going to do the horizontal first. So our horizontal, we're going to take care of actually both the horizontals at the same time. Technically, we're going to be stretching before we shift. So when we do our horizontal stretch, The way we're going to look at it is how it's going to change the length of the period. So if you have a horizontal stretch of 2, if it gets twice as wide, that'll make the period be twice as long. If we compress it so that it's half as wide, it'll make the period half as long as the original period. So what we're going to do is look at how these transformations change the period. So our period usually is 2 pi. Now, when we see a horizontal stretch, any of the horizontal transformations that we see, instead of multiplying by w, it'll act like the opposite, which is multiplying by the reciprocal of w, or 1 over w. So if you see a 2 right here for w, that doesn't mean it gets twice as wide. That means it gets half as wide. So all the horizontals are the opposite of what they look like. So what we're going to do, whoa, I said 2 pi and wrote down 2w. So normally the period is 2 pi. When we multiply this by 1 over w, which is the effect the transformation has, our new period is going to be 2 pi over w. So that's how we're going to compute the period. We're going to divide it by the coefficient in front of x. And then we have a horizontal shift. And the shift is going to go to the right, h. Now, it looks like in the general form that it's a minus. So if it looks negative, you're going to shift in the positive direction. And if it looks positive, you're going to shift in the negative or to the left. So all the horizontals are going to be the opposite of what they appear to be. So those are the two horizontal transformations, vertical. Vertical, usually they're a little bit more straightforward to see. We're going to stretch vertically by A. So whatever uh, value capital A is, that's how we're going to vertically stretch. And then the plus K, we're going to shift up K. And just remember, all your stretches act like multiplication, and your shifts act like addition. So stretches are multiplication, shifts are addition. And again, you have to be careful on the horizontal.
Rizonals, all of the, what looks like multiply by w is the opposite. So multiply by one over w. And it looks like you're subtracting h, but that actually has the effect of going to the right. So we're gonna use this and graph out a transformed cosine function. And I'm actually going to not do any vertical transformations. So we're going to graph this function, and I need to find the period, the horizontal shift. There's no vertical transformations on this, so I won't need to worry about those. So before I even worry at all about the period or the shift, I have to do a little bit of algebra to get in the form that's at the top of the board. So what I have to do is factor out the coefficient of x. So I have to factor out a pi. So when we factor out pi, we're going to have x minus a half. So I'm just taking pi out of those terms. I took it out of there. I factored it out because I have to factor out the coefficient of x. All right, so period. Normally, period is 2 pi, but now period is going to be 2 pi over w. So in this case, w is pi. So we got 2 pi over pi. It's a little bit strange, but the period is just going to be 2 now. So that should seem pretty weird. Period p equals 2. What is the horizontal shift? How much are we going to go to the right? So let's look at the form. So what is h for us? Is it? Minus pi over two, or is it pi over two, or is it one half? one half? So it's one half. And that means half, it looks like minus, but this means half to the right. So we're shifting to the right one half. And those are the only two transformations we have to worry about. So I'm going to redraw one period of cosine, and that's in the box right here. This is a regular period of cosine, meaning it goes 0 to 2 pi. So what I want to do instead is think about going 0 to 2. So just think the length of the period. So I'll just redraw what we saw right there, 0 to 2 pi. So now I'm going to apply both of these transformations. So I'm going to change the period to 2. And I'm also going to apply the shift to the right 1 half. So let's go ahead and apply these both. So we get to pick our scale. I'm going to say that this is 1 half right there. So each little box I'll count as 1 half on my graph. So now I want to go 2 to the right. So I need to count over very carefully. What x value will I end at if I go to the right 2? So I'll end up with 2 and a half. So there's 1. There's 2, so this will be 2 and a half or 5 halves. So I'm going from 1 half to 5 halves. Now remember, fractions only suck if you don't have common denominator. So if I go to common denominator, 2 is 4 halves. So you can see yes, there's 1 half, and then I'm going to go 4 more halves. And that will get to the full period. 
So any questions on just laying out the x coordinates of this period? So now you have to plot the five key points. So I'll zoom over real quick to the, oh, I was lazy and didn't write in the x-intercepts. There we go. So I'm going to replot these five points starting at the beginning of the period at 1 half. So we're going to be up at 1. So we have the point 1 half 1. At the end of the period, we're up at 1 again. So that's 5 halves 1. And in the middle, we have y coordinate of negative 1. And then our 2x intercepts happen at the quarters right there. So again, all I'm doing is writing down those five key points, but I'm writing them where the period starts and ends. So any questions about getting these five points in the right spot? And now connect them together. Remember, the graph does not look like a V. It's supposed to look more like a smooth wave. So do your best to draw a smooth wave. I'm not going to count off points if you graph and it looks like a zigzag like that. But do your best to avoid writing a zigzag. One way to help out, just kind of draw little rounded parts right there on the tops and bottoms of the waves. And then There we go, it's good enough. This is a graph right there of, or one period of the graph of this cosine function. So it's a little strange the period is two, but that was because